Welcome to the Savvy Property Investors Podcast, a weekly show that delivers the best hard-hitting property industry news, business advice, and talks that will get you ascending in the real estate industry. Now, here's your host, the amazing award-winning property and business coach, best-selling author, and serial entrepreneur, Miss Sapphire Gray. Okay, and welcome to the Savvy Property Investors Show, Season 2, Episode 2. Today's topic, we're talking about how to win in the rent-to-rent property industry. Our guest today is Muzzy um, Duna from um, Imani Property Investors Limited and also the Property Entrepreneur Network, Penn. Welcome to another Savvy Property Investors Show. Our guest this week is Muzzy Duna. He will be sharing with us how to win in the property, in the rent-to-rent property industry. Our guest speaker, Muzzy, is a property acquisition director of Imani Property Investors Limited. Muzzy was born and bred in Zimbabwe and moved to the UK when he was 17 back in um, 2004. Studied manufacturing engineering in college and university while working for several companies. While working for several companies and also in the automotive industry in West Midlands. He worked as a, uh, he climbed the corporate ladder and at the point where he was a production manager in charge of over 70 employees at the age of 27. Muzzy then went on to get back into or got into property investment in 2018 through training courses and a lot of networking up and down the country where he raised funds to gain knowledge of finding, running and sourcing rent to rent properties across the country. Although he acquires HMOs and service accommodation units on a rent to rent basis, he also started to purchase properties using other people's money in West Midlands and currently has a portfolio of over 20 properties, predominantly for the service accommodation. He's also a franchisee at the Pen, and Muzzy has now been using his experience to assist landlords in achieving their goals and help landlords solidify win to win deals. My name is Sophia Gray, and I'm your host. So let's get started. Muzzy, thank you so much for joining us today. How are you doing? Absolutely fantastic. That was a great introduction. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> it's all true. It's all about you, Muzzy. It's, it's fantastic <laughs> that you're here with us joining us today. I really want to get learning about your um, rent-to-rent business. So what was it that inspired you to get started in the property industry? Well, um, to be honest with you, property itself was actually something that um, I personally wanted to do for a long time anyway. And like many people who are getting started, I actually thought it was just too far up. You know, like when you've really, really made it in life, you get involved in property. And I just thought to myself, as a goal somewhere in the future, um, when I retire, I can start buying houses. That's what I actually thought. Um I didn't realize that there's ways to get involved in property when you don't have as much money. So um, I kind of followed this standard blueprint that many people follow, whether they know it or not. It's like, you know, you, you go to nursery, you go to school, you go to college, and then you study for this perfect job that you're going for. Uh, you get the job, ideally one that correlates with what you studied whether it's college or university and for me it worked out which was brilliant so i was actually an apprentice so i was studying and doing what i was studying at work at the same time which was a a fantastic position to be in and um as as i went along you know it's it's supposed to be you you meet someone you get married you have kids or you buy a house at some point in there if you can afford it and we managed to do all of that that's kind of like the standard blueprint. Now, the next stage was buying the next house, which is something that's supposed to be like a 20 year plan. Mm -hmm. And that's before I got to know that you can get involved in property before that. 
So I bumped into this uh, property training course, um, which I was dragged to by my wife and sister-in-law, to be fair. Um, I, I was convinced they only wanted me because they needed a driver. And I thought, uh, <laughs> I, I might as well just go with them. And I sat there and I thought to myself, what can they teach in property? You just have to raise, raise a deposit, right? Just raise a deposit and buy the house. What else is there to teach? There's nothing else. And um, that is when my eyes were, were opened in terms of the property world and how many things you can actually do without any money, with little amount of money. And even when you have loads of money, you still have a variety of options of things that you can actually do. And um, that's when the concept of rent to rent resonated with me. Because rent to rent, as many people know, it's 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 a cash flowing strategy. You know, mm -hmm. you're supposed to be just generate cash flow with as little as much as as possible. And um, it, it's it's ideally for people that don't have the money up front, but then anyone can do rent to rent, whether you have money or not. We get to find out for anyone who's in the property industry, you know, even if you have money, it's going to run out at some point. So you need to find creative ways to start using other people's money and strategies where you don't have to have money, but generate cash flow. So for me, it wasn't out of choice. It was just because it's the only strategy that I could get involved in because yeah. I didn't have the money. So yeah. that's how I actually got started in rent to rent and how I sort of bumped into property. Brilliant. That's a real, that's really good. I'm sure your wife is, is not regretting dragging you now. <laughs> you your driver, I'm sure you're really happy that you was that driver on that day. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Can you explain more about your role and what is involved in, in, within the rent to rent um, industry? Okay. Yeah. Um, so rent to rent so a lot of people know it as a strategy we don't actually see rent to rent as a strategy we see it as an acquisition tool it's a bit like buying a house so buying is not the strategy what you do with it once you've bought it is the strategy so rent to rent to us is the acquisition tool what you then do with it is the strategy so um we we do hmos uh we do service accommodation and we help other people who want information about social housing, supported living and stuff like that. Now, in terms of what I actually do, I'm more of the, the face. I, I prefer talking to people and we have people in the team that prefer talking to computers. I'm not really good with computers. Mm -hmm. I'm not good with systems. So I leverage um, people who know how to do that, who prefer that. And I just speak to people. So my role in this whole business yeah. is essentially getting more business in speaking to people about what we do speaking yeah. to people about how we can help them there's loads of people who don't actually realize um just having a family renting out your property is not the only way of generating income from a property and there's people who kind of advertise a property for a family and they've had houses empty for about a year because no one wants to take that property and we've helped people in that form now a lot of people see rent to rent as a cash flow as in what can can rent to rent give to me but we've seen what rent to rent can give to other people as well what us taking up taking the property from a landlord who's distressed because the, the property is costing them so much we take it on, we help with the refurbs, and then we manage it on our strategies, whatever strategy fits in that area. And how the landlord then kind of has that sigh of relief, you know? So the property is being taken care of. I don't have to pay a letting agent fee. I don't have to pay management or maintenance fee. Um, it's being taken care of, and it's now paying me as well on top of that. So, um, it's it's not just about what we get from it. It's how it becomes a win-win for everyone involved. I, you know, I always have this argument through. I, I teach um, property um, to my academy. And one of the things that people always ask me, is rent to rent a legitimate and legal avenue for property investors mm -hmm. um, to go down? So what do you say to that? Because I know you're in it, so obviously yeah. it must be legit. Mm -hmm. So it's it's understandable. Now, this is a conversation, as you're aware, that we have a lot. So a lot of people get involved and they want to know about this whole rent-to-rent -rent thing. And um, it's illegal, you know, yeah. you're not allowed to be doing that. So one thing that most people don't fully understand is the legality or what makes it legal or illegal is down to what paperwork you sign, essentially. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, loads of people do rent to rent. They just do it the wrong way. Yeah. 
Yes. Okay. So you've got two contracts. We'll say contracts. One is an AST, which is an assured short hold tenancy, which mm -hmm. says I, Muzi, am the tenant and I will live in this property and I will pay you, Mr. or Mrs. Landlord, the rent. OK, you then are irresponsible for the house itself. If anything breaks down, I expect you to take care of me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the short, short old tenancy. Mm -hmm. If you sign that and then you run rent to rent, then you're doing the wrong thing because yeah. that's not what the that's not what the contract says. Mm -hmm. If you want to run rent to rent, you then need to sign a management agreement. Essentially, it's mm -hmm. an agreement that says I, Muzzy, will take control of this property However, I'm not living in it. Even though I will pay you rent, I'm not living in it. I'm in charge of whoever's in the property. I'm in charge of whatever happens in the property. So I am renting the property off you to rent it to someone else. Mm -hmm. So I can then sign an AST agreement with whoever's inside the property. That's but right. I don't sign an AST agreement with the actual landlord. So if yeah. you have that paperwork set up correctly, there's nothing illegal about it. Mm -hmm at all what people don't understand is that there is a right way and there's a wrong way absolutely and if you're not educated you're going down the wrong road and that's why i mean like when you're a genuine um property manager and agent yourself and mm -hmm. doing it the right way that's why you're able to do it so much for landlords because you are doing it in the correct way absolutely when people get into hot water then they don't know who to turn to because they set their business up in the wrong fashion but Correct. you went out, educated yourself, made sure that you're doing the right thing, not only by it for yourself, but for the landlords as well. And that's mm -hmm. why it works so harmonious between you and the landlord. Because oh, yeah, you're absolutely. doing their property well. That's brilliant. Mm. So how do you, as the middleman, make money in rent to rent? Okay, so the simple way of answering that question is what we have to pay out is less than what we get paid. Mm. And this is the essential basics of any business. What you pay out needs to be less than what you get paid. That's where the money comes from. Now, if I take a simple example, looking at one property, let's say an HMO, uh, a five bedroom HMO, this five bedroom in the West Midlands, if you ask for rent, the market rent is about 1200 up to 1500 dependent on the type of the property and the quality inside it. You take this property on, and say, Mr. or Mrs. Landlord, I will pay you your 1500 rent. I will take care of the bills, which are probably about 500 pounds. We just base it on 100 pounds per room. So I have to pay out 2000, the rent and the bills. What I need to make sure of is what comes to me is more than 2000. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. before you even touch the property, before you speak to the landlady or the landlord, if you see that this is what they're asking for and you can gauge how much the bills are going to be, you need to understand what the room rate is going to be. So if the room rate is 500 pounds, you know you've got 500 pounds per room that's coming. Therefore, you've got 2,500 coming to you. And then you've got 1,500 going to the landlord, 500 pounds going to the bills. You then get 500 pounds. Mm. That's the basis way of actually uh, understanding it or looking into it. And that's for any strategy. Make sure you can analyze what's coming to you and what you have to pay out. If the difference is not really that great, it's probably not worth it because you're not always going to have 100% occupancy anyway and mm -hmm. things can go wrong. You want to make sure you have a um, a good balance there that, that an, an, sort of like analyzes and covers the risk that you're taking on. So yeah, yeah, that's how we make money. We make sure what comes to us is more than what we have to pay out. Yeah, I mean, I'm forever telling people, do your due diligence. Mm. Go to some local estate agents, find out what a room would uh, cost uh, and per room. And it depends on the sizing of the room as well, because you could get more for some rooms than others. So always make sure you do your numbers, run your numbers before taking on a property, because mm. once you've taken it on and signed that document, you're now in charge of that property and that landlord is not going to turn around and say, well, you, you don't have to pay me if the rooms are not rent. They're going to want their money. They're so want their money. Yeah, make sure you run the numbers, you know, because a lot of people, as I said, when you're a novice going into an industry such as property, especially mm. when you're doing the rent to rent, yeah, you're doing an acquisition and you're, you're managing somebody else's property, but you also want to make sure that you are being ethical with that person as well because they're entrusting Absolutely. you to manage it well. You know, Absolutely. and if, if you're not doing the proper things, right things by them, 
you're losing, they're losing. It's like your exactly. reputation is, is gone. Exactly. Much, you yeah. know. And the major yeah. word that you use there, Safa, is is um is ethical. And yeah. this this is something that a lot of people completely ignore. If yeah. you actually set yourself to just look at numbers, 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 um, some people then actually think, you know what, it's a great deal because they were asking for 1500 I went and offered and took the property on for a grand. So fantastic. You know, it's an amazing deal. But is it for them? Mm -hmm. Is it really? So I think it's worth actually looking into it because someone can agree today that, okay, fine, have it for a thousand because they're desperate, because mm -hmm. there's something that's going on in the family and they just don't want to have to do anything about it. They let you have it. But then there's something called buyer's remorse. At some point when whatever's bothering them at the time goes away, they're going to start thinking, how did I actually al allow myself to do that? Mm -hmm. That's one. And secondly, how on earth did you actually push me to do that? And then yeah. they'll start actually holding that against you. That relationship at some point later in the future is going to fall apart. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. if if you're going to go and offer a thousand pounds when they've asked for 1500, the reason has to be good enough for them to understand that it's still a win for you. It's still a win for me. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's not just about taking as much out of them as possible. It's about they win, you win anyone else involved wins and if that's a situation where everyone understands that it's a win-win that's a long-lasting relationship yeah, that's absolutely. gonna go forever yeah and it's always about being upfront, showing them why the rent i'm saying i'm going to take this on board for a thousand pounds let's mm. it could be repairs that you need to do yeah so you can have it as a period of time where it's that low and once yeah. the, all the rooms are rented then you could say look we can then go back and say this is what I want to give you in six months time because uh, we've got a nice cash flow coming in mm. and they would agree to it because they know that you're planning to give them more or the reason why you're doing things that they landlords, landladies, even mm -hmm. they love that. They love when you can say to them, this is the plan that we have that we're going to be working towards. Are you happy with it? And once Absolutely. they say that, then it's like you're, you're they're committing but you know, at some point you're going to go back and say, "Hey, do you remember when I said that if we're cash flowing, I want to now give you more? Exactly. Who wouldn't want more? And who wouldn't turn around and say, "Wow, you absolutely. remember? This? You know, absolutely. It, absolutely. And you have more. The thing about it, you can from one landlord, you can feed yourself many times if you do it right, exactly. or you can burn yourself once by just not being ethical. Do it mm -hmm. once and think, oh, I'm not going to go back and address this. Oh, they will forget about it." But if you remember, if that if you remember and then go remind them, often or not, they're giving you more properties. Absolutely. Oh, I really like how you work. I love your ethics. I want to work with you more. And then on top of that, they could also recommend you. There you go. You so know? That's, that's the beauty of being ethical because you, you assume that that one landlord has many properties, even if yeah. they're talking to you about one, assume they have many. And yeah. then also landlords know landlords. That's right. So if you upset that one landlord, you're potentially upsetting a massive portfolio of them. And that could be a, a potential investor as well. We talked about investors as well. Yeah. Yeah. That could be a potential investor as well. They could look mm -hmm. at you and think, I like working with this person, you know, and they know what they're talking about. They know what they're doing. Hey, I've got another business opportunity. Would you like to be involved in it? You, you don't know where that journey is going to take you. So try to start off on the right foot and in a, in a manner that is ethical. Absolutely. So, so join us after the break with more insights from Muzzy. And welcome back. Muzzy, you've been giving us some fantastic insights about the rent to rent and the opportunities that you've got into and opportunities that are out there for other potential um, want to be landlords as well. So what do you think are some of the benefits of getting into the rent to rent property investment space? Oh, there's two major benefits, like two major benefits. There's loads more, but then I only speak about these two. Mm -hmm. One is for me, from experience as well, you can get started with little or no money. OK, mm -hmm. so um, I, I usually give the example of what would you need to to buy a hundred thousand pound house? Or what would you need to rent to rent a hundred thousand pound house? Mm -hmm. So the the basis of okay, if you're going to be buying the house, you're going to need about um, 
probably if you're purchasing it as a second property for a buy to let, you're going to need to raise about 20 25k. Yeah. Yeah. And then you need to pay three thousand pounds stamp duty on top and then a thousand pound legal fees. So around twenty nine thousand pounds that you need to raise up front to get that hundred thousand pound property and then furnish it. Whereas if you rent to rent, you need to pay the deposit. You need to pay the first month's rent and then you need to furnish it, which is probably going to be four to eight thousand pounds, dependent on the style or whatever it is that you want to do. Now, if you then actually look at the cash flow after purchasing it, you're most likely going to have a higher cash flow on the purchased property because the mortgage you're paying is less mm -hmm. and then a lower cash flow because you're paying rent on the other one. OK, however, yeah. if, if the difference is not really that much, you're probably looking at about 500 on at, at best case. Mm. If I'm actually getting a cash flow of a thousand pounds on a rent to rent and one thousand five hundred on a purchase. Yeah. Based on how much money I've put up front, I could get another four or five rent to rents True. and actually get five thousand, six thousand pounds a month coming from the rent to rent using the same amount of money that I've used to purchase that one property. True. Okay. So there's major benefits of buying the house. Don't get me wrong. You can buy the house, the, 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 the development itself, the, the uplift of the property price and all of that, you can get that and it's yours. Yes, I get that. But then if you're looking for cash flow, what we say is when you're actually looking at rent to rent, rent to rent shouldn't be your forever plan. Get yeah. rent to rent to get yourself started. Once you've generated enough income, then start purchasing these properties. And you can use the same same theory. I mean, um, I've, I've spoken about the fact that you can raise funds to run a rent to rent. You can raise funds to purchase a property as well. Yeah. And the good thing about rent to rent, the one is little money up front. And the second major thing is it gives you experience of what you can do in the property market before you have to buy it. It's because true. property in terms of purchasing is one of the largest investments you're ever going to involve it yourself mm -hmm. in. You don't want to involve yourself that much without knowing anything whatsoever, because the mistakes are going to cost you painfully. Mm -hmm. So if you get involved in rent to rent, little money, make the mistakes. If you lose the property, you lose the property. You've lost what? An investment of 10K maybe. Yeah. But if you've bought the house, it's a different yeah. story. It's always yeah. like a try before you buy kind of scenario, it's, it's, isn't it? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Out. Like what you hear so far? Make sure you never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button below. Our podcast is only made possible by great listeners like you. Okay, so what are some of the key drawbacks of getting into the um, rent to rent framework? So one of the drawbacks, which is something that I hear when I speak to quite a few people who have started, who are looking to start, is one, the question you asked earlier on about the legality of it. Mm -hmm. You know, am, am I doing the right thing? Is this allowed? Is it even legal? So I don't want to get involved in property in an illegal manner because it's going to cost me so much. So it's just a case of getting yourself educated again. Get to know how to do it right. Um, mm -hmm. Stick with people that are doing it get involved in education. There's loads of information out online. You can actually go speak to uh, mentors who can help you. You can go to crash courses. You can get information for free. You can go online. So get yourself involved. So that's one of the drawbacks. And the other one is um, the finance part of it. So we say little money. And if you're going to invest in a rent to rent, we're still talking about four to 8,000 pounds. Mm -hmm. It's little money compared to having to purchase it. And whenever we say a lot of money or little money, that's opinionated. A hundred grand to someone is little money. A hundred yes. grand to someone else is a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Same as 4,000 pounds, 8,000 pounds. So it could be a lot of money for someone. And they say, I want to get started in rent to rent. Well, you're going to need six, 7,000 pounds. Oh, that's too much. I'm going back to work. Yeah. Yep. So that's yeah. another drawback. Finance is always going to be an issue. And those are things that you need to be considering. I'll say those are the two major issues. Case of education in terms of what do I actually do to make sure I'm doing things right? And two, the finance that I'm going to need up front. Once people get started, the next scary thing is, am I going to get the money back? Yeah. Am I actually going to generate this income you're talking about, Muzi? Yeah. So that that becomes it. All of it is just a, a logical version of justifying fear. Yeah. 
Yeah. And okay. I, you, you're going to get that. You're going to get that with anything. And yeah, if, not being yeah. risk, you have to be able to, to understand risk. And I always say to people when I'm teaching, I've, I've always advocated, look, if you're going to get into this, this type of strategy or, or, or strategy to lead rent to rent to lead to HMOs or to uh, service accommodation, you have to understand there is no such thing anymore as no money down deals. You have to mm. put in some money into anything that you're getting into, especially investments. But Absolutely. you've got to be prepared for it as well. And I always say only put in what you can afford to lose. Mm -hmm. yeah you mm -hmm. have to have that kind of attitude and i'm not teaching you to lose what i'm saying is is that you need to understand it as a risk base any investment that you do irrespective of if someone turns around and says oh yeah it's a solid investment no investment is solid <laughs> because it's exactly what it's called it says it on the tin if you look up the word investment you're investing something yes you want a return on it but also you have to look at you could also lose from it so Absolutely. there is a, there is a benefit and and a, there's a positive and a negative around investments, mm. um, and so teaching it and understanding it from that principle is is excellent. You have to understand you've got to put some money into it, and yeah. that's basically not investing in a profit. You're investing in yourself. I mean, people spend thousands upon thousands to go to university and come out and work in supermarkets. Now, there ain't nothing wrong with working in a supermarket, but if you're investing in your education, then why not invest in something that can actually or 99 percent of the time will give you a good return on it you know and Absolutely. that's what i always say invest in yourself so when you're spending money make sure you're trying to educate yourself as well mm. so what advice would you give to someone interested also getting into this kind of field as well so you've already touched on the greatest advice i could give anyone mm. and that's invest in yourself mm. okay just you first, whether it's rent to rent you want to do or purchasing, whether it's commercial to residential, whatever you want to do, invest in you first and get to educate yourself in in how. So uh, I listen to quite a lot of books and um, I believe it was Pastor T.D. Jakes who spoke about the fact that you need to date yourself get to know who you are first before you want to know anyone else. This works in relationships. This works in business. Mm -hmm. How do you get to work? What makes you tick? And then once you get to know that, and this is not a, I'm going to do this for, for a week and I know myself. No, it's going to be a lifetime process. Okay. But that's where you start. Right. And then you actually start investing in yourself in terms of education, specifically for what it is that you want to learn or anything to do with personal development, mm -hmm. anything surrounding whatever it is that you want to do. You touched on going to university and then ending up working in a supermarket. Unless you're studying about supermarkets, it becomes an absolutely useless investment. Mm -hmm. It's a really painful investment to actually put yourself through the money, the three years of studying something that you are never actually going to get to use. So when you're actually looking at this um, in terms of, of getting started in whatever strategy, if you're going to put focus on it, you want to be able to get that knowledge, get that experience, all the networks that you get in contact with. You want to be utilizing them to actually build your portfolio, to build whatever it is that you're looking to do. You make sure yeah. it actually marries up. So I would say start by investing in yourself, get yourself educated Get yourself close to people that are doing what it is that you want to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You want to be the worst person in the classroom. Yeah. Stick to those people that are doing what you want to be doing. And sooner or later, you're definitely going to you be you're going to be close to them. So I heard yeah. saying some points that if you hang around the barbershop long enough, sooner or later, you're going to get a haircut. Yeah. And this is essentially, that's what you want to do. Stick close yeah. to the people that are doing what you want to do. Sooner or later, you start thinking like them, you start performing like them, and you get the results that they're getting as well. Yeah. And not only that as well, there's no quick, rich schemes out there. So oh, it is yeah. going to take time. And that's how education is from birth. When we've gone to school, we've come up to college, we've gone to university. Everything was a process. Everything took time. So when you're learning about who you are and discovering who you are, you're also discovering what you like to do and what you don't like to do. Absolutely. So if you're getting into an industry, take your time to learn it. Don't rush it unless that's what you're passionate about. 
The mm. moment you say, this is what I'm passionate about, you know, eat, sleep and drink property. That's what I do. I get out of bed Monday mornings and I love getting out of bed Monday mornings because I'm passionate about what I do. Mm. I absolutely love the property industry and all aspects of it as well. And I, I know a plethora of aspects of the property industry, but I enjoy it. So getting into a space that you enjoy and educating yourself is the number one well, key thing for me when I'm, when I'm educating people in this space. So thanks for sharing that. No problem. How, how do, do you go about sourcing or approaching your first landlord with the idea of working with them um, to provide tenants? Okay, I, I love that question. Love that question. Because at this point, most people are thinking, what's the script? Yeah. yeah. What is it that do I, what do I say? So if you're listening, if you're listening to this and you're waiting for a script, put away your pen and paper, there is no script. Okay. So if we go through what we spoke about already, investing in yourself, educating yourself, the best part about investing in yourself is you get to find out how to portray the best muzzy, the portray the best you to yeah. anyone, absolutely anyone. So you know you're looking for a rent to rent deal. You know what you can do for the landlord. You know exactly what it's going to do for you. Compile all that information and just portray you. The more you you are to anyone, the more likely they're going to want to work with you. So we talk about being authentic. Being authentic means you just be you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Muzzy mm-hmm. says this to everyone. Or Muzzy says this to a landlord. So that's what I'm going to say. No. No. Take that information, understand why he's saying it, and then portray yourself, okay? So what I would suggest is once you've got the information on how exactly rent-to-rent works, how it benefits you, how it benefits them, put that information together and just portray you. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Because it does. it is all about your relationship, which is how you communicate. I can't use your language. I can't use your script to go and do that with a landlord. I can't, I can't do that. I have to be me. And me is, you know, I could be this bubbly person. Someone else could be very laid back. Someone could be very shy or don't even like the sales thing. So if I was to give you a sales script, you'd be so robotic that people were thinking, Exactly. (laughs) Whose script are you actually following? You know, I I don't like this person. And it will, it will gripe them. It would really get their back up. Mm -hmm. When I approach people, when I'm, I'm looking for a property, and I go and see a, a property I like and I want to purchase it, I start communicating, not even with the agent, the person that's selling it. And we we strike up this friendliness and, you know, I'm jovial, so they joke back and I look around and I don't sort of go in there and blast their property. I'm saying, you know, oh, this you, you've got a good idea here, you could do this. And, you know, when you start giving that kind of jolliness, they say, oh, I like her. And at many a times people have come back to the agent and said they wouldn't sell it to anyone else in this is, um, not Sophia buying it just because of the way I approach things and that how I do things. And I always want to give fairness. So when yeah. you're looking at, even when you're in a rent to rent, being fair about the rent, being fair, how you're going to deliver, being fair, how you're going to manage their properties. They love to hear that. They love to hear yeah. how you are because once they know who you are and they heard you, they expect that same reception time and time again. Now, if you're following the script, you're going to be under that script for the rest of the time that you're there. Exactly. Yeah? exactly. You know? that, that's like showing up. It's just showing up with a mask on. And yeah. I know I know, we've already spoken a couple of times about the concept of emotion, how we are emotional beings that's and right. we justify our emotional decisions by using logic. And the yeah. emotion itself comes from that authenticity, just yeah. you being you. You know, it's yeah. easier to make friends if you have no intention of getting anything out of them okay. than if you have in the back of your head that I want that property. So you're, it becomes kind of like the landlord is in the way now. I need yeah. to just find a way to move them out the way and have this property. And they will sense that. We're humans. We sense it, that something is not sitting right here. And you yeah. might find a situation where you've got the best offer, but you still don't get the deal. Absolutely. Why is that? Yeah. You know, if it doesn't quite click and they don't quite feel right working with you, you're not going to get it. And Absolutely. sometimes you'll have the worst offer and they'll still want to work with you because yeah. something clicks. We're emotional beings. And to get in touch with that emotion, you just have to be yourself. Don't be anyone else. Just be yourself. Yeah. Even 
if you make a mistake in the things that you say, it's easy to come back and say, Do you know what? I was mistaken on that. I'm really sorry. But I know now, you know. Whereas if you're robotic, you have to be perfect. Yeah. Humility is one of the key words that I use across my, my businesses is being humble, being able to see yeah. someone else's perspective, being able to empathize with their needs as well. Because if they're renting their property to you, there's a reason why they, they're relying on you to help them through it. And many a times I've, I mean, I'm a qualified psychologist. So many a times I've helped using my psychology to help them to mm -hmm. embrace where they are, because they could be in a really bad space. And then you're, you're there, you're giving them counsel outside of what I'm, I'm actually there for. I'm giving counsel and I'm doing all these other things. And they said, you know what? You did. You came here for one reason and you're helping us in another area of our life. And they just find that so in, impactful for them because it's not about what I actually went there for that I'm actually helped them with. We'll get to that eventually. But what you need me for is this at the moment. So I always try to impart my information and try and help them for a process because they could be going for a divorce. They could yeah. just recently be widowed. They could anything life's changing situations because have just happened. And if you just bulldoze in there and said, look, I want your property. This is what I'm offering you. They think, Ooh, and then they will come back and think, I don't like this person. Exactly. But if you see their situation, why they're doing something and being able to advise them and help them through it. And even if they don't use it, at least you can t look back and think, you know what? I gave you some solid advice there and I hope I wish you all the best with it. Absolutely. Okay. So what are your top two things that you think people need to have sorted when joining, getting into the rent to rent um, industry? Top two things that you need to have sorted. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm, I'm going to sound like a bit of a broken record here. No but, way. <laughs> the, two, the, the two things go back to um, one you understand a bit of your why and it kind of correlates to dating yourself. Yeah. It correlates to getting to know you. Mm -hmm. You understand your why. You have to start with why. That's a book, by the way. Simon Sinek, anyone I recommend, read the book, Start With Why. So why exactly am I getting involved in property mm -hmm. at all? You know, if you're in a job now and then you're thinking, I want to do property, question yourself why. The answer to that question should not be good enough to impress anyone. This is your answer. You want to stand in the mirror and say, why am I doing this? This is the reason why I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And whatever that reason is, don't question whether, whether Muzi is going to be happy with it or Sapphire is going to be happy with it. This is a question that you only you will answer. Now, the reason why it needs to be just you is with any business, Rent to rent is the same. You're going to hit some crazy brick walls. You're going to face some really ridiculous challenges. And you want to be in a position where when you hit that challenge, you look back and think, why on earth am I doing this? That answer comes back again. And you think, you know what? I'll walk around it. I'll go over it. I'll smoke through it. I have to do it because of that reason. If your reason is weak, when you hit that challenge, you're going back. Yeah. Straight away, this is where you actually miss out and you lose and you quit. That's the point you actually go back because the reason why was not strong enough. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing. Get your why set up and get yourself in the in, in getting to know you. Mm -hmm. The second part is getting yourself educated. And I can't say this enough, people. Get yourself educated. Mm -hmm. Get to know how the industry works. Get to know what rent to rent itself is. And this is not just about rent to rent. This is any strategy. Um, even even if you, you're looking to do stocks and bonds, get yourself educated. Get to know what it is that you're involving yourself in because you want to be to have a good idea of whatever you're putting your time and money into. And if you're going to get yourself involved in that, you want to be, you want to have a full understanding of, okay, I know exactly what it is that I'm doing. If I were to lose money in this, I know where I went wrong. Yeah. Mm. You don't want to just jump in because Miz is doing it. It's got to be good. You know, someone else is doing it. So it's got to be good and just jump in with no education. I wouldn't recommend that. Yeah. Bear in mind, there's people that are making it without the education. That's not to say everyone's going to make it without education. Mm -hmm. My recommendation is get to know yourself, get yourself educated. Those are the two things that you want to get started. Excellent. So, Muzzy, thanks so much for answering our questions today. 
how can listeners contact you and learn more about the services that you offer? Oh, um, I'm gosh, I'm all over social media. So um, for anyone who is uh, more of a, a Facebook person, uh, the name is Muzinduna. It's spelled M-U-Z-Z-I-E. And the surname is N-D-U-N-A or at Muzi86. You'll find me on Facebook on the page. Feel free to reach out. And um, Muzinduna on um, Instagram, Muzinduna on uh, LinkedIn as well. So just feel free to reach out. I'm happy to have a chat about this. Brilliant. Do you have a website as well that they can share or how would they get in touch with you if it's a landlord that's listening and would love you mm -hmm. to take over their property? How can they get in touch with you that way? To be fair, there, there, is, there isn't actually a website. Um, yeah. I've never actually used a website. It's, it's usually word of mouth and uh, a load of networking. Yeah, okay. <laughs> they can reach out via social media if you're a landlord yeah. listening or a new investor and want to ask uh, Muzzy any questions, please use these social media handles as well. Um, they will be in our, our feeds as well. So come and take, um, be savvy and take flight with us. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, review, and download our podcast that you are watching now. The Savvy Property Investor Show welcomes you every week on a Friday and would love to hear your views as well. So don't forget to leave your comments and anything you would like to for us to share Let's hear from you. Thank you for listening. This week's episode of the Savvy Property Investors Podcast was brought to you by our sponsor, the Savvy Women Group. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed today's show, head over to our website, www.savvywomen.co.uk to gain access to our free resources and more insights about our guest speaker today. Remember, we make your business our business so you can unlock your full potential and improve your quality of life.